Hi, and welcome to week one of the Paid Acquisition Deep Dive Google Ads course. This week, we're going to be giving you an introduction to Google Ads. I'm going to be talking about if it's suitable for your business, if it's not suitable for your business, and how you can assess that. As well as that, we will be talking about the different types of advertising campaigns that you can use with Google Ads to benefit your business. And also, I will give you a brief introduction into the platform and how to set that up. Today, as I mentioned, we're going to be covering how to assess if Google Ads is, a, is the best fit for your business or is a good fit for your business. But also over the next seven weeks, we'll be learning a lot of different things. So today it's going to be a lot around using the platform, looking at it from the inside. Um, next week, we're going to be talking about keyword management, the week after audience management, bid strategy and budget management, conversion tracking and management and ad copy and landing pages. And then we're going to have a seventh week, which you can attend, uh, which will be a live setup demo. So I will go through how to set up those campaigns from start to finish. Today will be a light intro into that, but you will see a far more detailed setup in, this, in week seven. So firstly, you need to assess, are Google Ads right for your business? So Google Ads is a fantastic high intent platform. And what that means is that you have the opportunity to get in front of people directly when they are looking for a solution to a problem that they have. Now this reflects directly on your business's problem solution fit. So is your product or service a known solution for a problem? And if so, then it makes it very easy for you to leverage Google Ads to maximize a high intent audience because what will happen is, is that people are aware that your solution exists and they will search for it accordingly. However, if your product or service has come up with a new solution to a problem that people may not be aware of, Google Ads may not be a direct fit for you in saying that, there are aspects of Google Ads that will allow you to leverage um, that, that scenario. Because what is happening in that scenario is, is that you need to make people aware that your solution exists for the problem before they start searching for it. There's lots of different types of Google Ads and search ads are probably the most popular and typically tend to be the highest performing when it comes to a return on investment for your business. So ideally, a problem solution fit here is where Google Ads becomes a really good solution, a really good fit for your business. However, it can still be used if your solution is something new and you need to get awareness out around that. So if someone searches something into Google and your advert comes up and if you have problem solution fit or people are aware of your solution, then it becomes much easier. However, if you are in the scenario where you need to build awareness, you need to look at other advertising solutions with Google, such as their display adverts or their video adverts, which is essentially where you place the adverts is slightly different. Placement is key when it comes to Google Ads. So for example, um, when you are looking at your problem and solution and, and how people are aware of those things, the search ads are great in terms of getting people to just type in their problem or type in the potential solution and, and you come up. However, that placement is for a really high intent audience. You're putting something in front of someone who is actively looking for it. But if you need to put something in front of someone to make them aware of it, then it's slightly different. It's putting something in front of someone who might like it and the display and video options cater for that option in that scenario. In that scenario, I would also recommend looking at Facebook ads or a social media platform to advertise as well as using Google ads. If you need more help with the social media ad side of things, we have a Facebook ads course available on the platform as well that you can access. So here are the different types of Google ads. Um, so here at the top, you can see the search adverts, and these are the ones most of us are familiar with. When you search for something on Google, we see these text ads appear at the top and they appear above the organic results. This is great for a few reasons. One is that you can jump straight to the top without a lot of SEO work. You don't really need to worry about your SEO if you're really leveraging paid advertising. Now, that being said, it's best to have both working in harmony. You need to look at your SEO just as much as your search ads, but 
your search adverts are what I would consider almost like a quick win. It happens much quicker. You can get leads much quicker because you're paying for them. SEO tends to be much of a longer game. Second down here, you can see the display adverts. You're probably most familiar with these, um, at least here in Ireland, we always have them on news platforms. You can see here, there's, there's an advert here for Boximo. Recently, I was searching for car insurance, um, so I am seeing lots of display adverts for car insurance. You can use um, all of these advertising types, both for broad targeting and for remarketing. So in this instance, I've seen a remarketing ad here. I'm, I'm almost certain of that. The next one down is shopping adverts. So shopping adverts appear in a few locations um, and this is what they appear like. It's an image of the product, uh, the title of the product, the currency and the amount and the, the brand. And you can also integrate your Google reviews if you're using that to kind of leverage a bit more social proof in the shopping ads, which is a really, really good um, way to think about it if you have that capacity or if you're already using uh, Google reviews. You can see here the difference it makes between the first two and the third one, um, even though the price differences here are dramatic. This is a refurbished one. But as you can see, the, the shopping ads are a great, great way to get some in front of someone with a bit more visual um, options. So you can see up here, this is also a laptop search ad, but it's just text-based, whereas here it's more highly visual. Video adverts then, these appear on YouTube for, for the most part. There are all other placements available, but as YouTube is owned by Google, the video adverts are, are most integrated there, and we'll go through the different types of those as well. And then if you have an app, um, you can also use app adverts, and the placement is very similar to, to what you see in the search ads, but you have a button there um, to allow someone to download that app accordingly. Um, so these are all of the different types of adverts, the core types of adverts that you can use if you're thinking about using Google Ads. And these will differ from company to company in terms of which is the best fit for your business. Um, I have worked with people who just use search adverts. I've worked with people who've just used display and video adverts or just used shopping adverts because that is what is required and working best for the business. Sometimes you'll find yourself trying a few variants. Um, so you might have search, display, shopping and video and you'll find out very, very quickly which is the highest performing for you and you can start removing things accordingly then. So here are the search ads. Search ads allow you to appear in the Google search results above the organic results. So this is achieved through selecting relevant keywords and bidding on them. So the Google Ads platform works off a bidding system and it is complex in how it works. So there's a few things that you need to take into consideration and we'll be going through this in a lot more detail in our bidding and our keyword research phase of the course, which, which will be in the coming weeks. But just to give you a brief overview of what that is, essentially what happens is, is that you give Google a keyword and you say, I would like to appear for this keyword and you place a monetary amount on that. So you might say, let's say 50 cents or a dollar is what you want to spend. Now, there's two options in that scenario too. You can say to Google, right, I would like to put a dollar on it and you can manually set the amount that you want to pay or you can allow Google to auto bid on your behalf using different bid strategies. And we'll be talking about bid strategies as well in the future weeks. But what you want to think about here as well is that how well the keyword um, matches on the landing page and matches into your advert. So you want to keep, a, if you imagine, a thread going through from, your, from the keyword that is searched that you are bidding on through to the advert and through to the landing page. If that connection is there throughout, Google is more likely to give you uh, ch cheaper bids, essentially, because what happens is, is that Google balances the quality of the advert and the quality of the landing page against the bid just as, just as much as the bid, I should say. So what happens is, is that, say, for example, you had a competitor who was paying $2 on a specific keyword for your business, and I was paying $1.00. But my keyword, my landing page, all of all of my thread was very good throughout. My landing page loaded well. Um, it was clearly highly relevant to the keyword, and all of that came together quite well. However, my com the competitor hadn't done that work. Potentially, we would still appear in position one 
over the competitor despite them offering a higher bid to Google for that keyword. So it's extremely important to really optimize when it comes to your Google ads. And we will be doing an entire session on ad copy and landing pages because of how important that is in terms of really driving your costs down. Search adverts are very much separate to the organic results. Um, so they rely very much on your SEO efforts. So the where things appear here is dependent on whether you're paying for it or you just have very good SEO. Um, so you can see here laptops direct both have an advert and a organic result there back to back. Um, and those they're paying for to appear near the top. They're trying to outcompete the other competitors but also their SEO is doing a lot of the work there and they're, they're appearing number one in this search. Search campaigns are great for driving direct conversions. It's really high intent traffic, provides the perfect opportunity to be at the right place at the right time for a consumer looking for your product or service. So it's really important to remember that when you're thinking about your, your, your Google ads, that that um, high level of intent and the right place and the right time is kind of the, the key mantra of marketing. You're always trying to get in front of people at the right place and the right time. And this is probably one of those key examples of where that happens most frequently. Um, so it's a really, really positive thing for most businesses. There are different types of search adverts. Um, there's the, these are the three key types, expanded text adverts, responsive search ads, and dynamic search ads. These, key, these three are slightly different from each other. Um, so over the past maybe 10 years or so, um, expanded text ads would have been the most popular option for vast majority of businesses because they were what was available. More recently, responsive search ads have come into the mix and even more recently, dynamic search ads. As of now, with new Google ad accounts and for accounts going forward, Google recommends responsive search ads first and foremost. And I can see that throughout the performance of any ad account I look at right now is that the responsive search ads typically are very high performing in comparison to the expanded text adverts. But also I've done a lot of testing with the dynamic search ads and they typically outperform everything, but you have to be, they, they each come with their pros and cons, which I'll go through now. So expanded text adverts allow you to put in your URL, your headlines and your descriptions. And what happens in this instance is when you put them in, they are set. That is what the advert will appear as those three headlines and those two descriptions, whatever you put in there will appear in the advert. In the case of responsive search ads, you get the opportunity to put in multiple headlines and multiple descriptions. And what will happen in this scenario is that Google will mix and match them and start figuring out which headlines and which descriptions are the highest converting for your business. So in this scenario, you get the opportunity to try multiple copies, to try multiple different descriptions, and it gives you a better chance over time of hitting people with the right message at the right time. It's always really important in this part of your campaign, um, once you have selected your keywords and you're creating your adverts, that you are placing your keywords into the headlines and into the description as much as possible in the sense of, say, for example, a digital marketer Ireland. I'm just going to use that as a very broad example. If that was my keyword, then in my headline, I would have to put in digital marketer Ireland and, and same with the responsive adverts. Dynamic search ads work slightly differently. As you can see here, it is offering to dynamically generate a landing page, dynamically generate a headline, and dynamically generate a display URL. In this option, you actually only put in two descriptions. And what happens here is that when someone searches something that Google feels is highly relevant to your business, they will automatically put whatever the person searched into the advert on your behalf so it'll dynamically just happen. The advert that will appear at the top of Google will automatically have whatever anyone searched in the headline. And it will say, okay, well, this is the best fit landing page in that scenario. And it will dynamically display everything for you. So it's really, really interesting. It's, it's a lot of machine learning. It's a lot around the algorithm, but you have to take into consideration in this instance that actually Google is very, very good at this. Um, now, in saying all of this, what happens is you might appear in the dynamic search ads 
say you set up a dynamic search ad and someone searched for your competitor or someone searched for uh, your business name plus the word refund, something like that, um, that can also pull into the headline, which can be dangerous. So with the dynamic search ads, what I would say is that with Google, the same way that you can put in the keywords that you want to bid on, you can also put in all of the keywords that you don't want to appear for. And in that scenario, you really want to be thinking about it when it comes to your dynamic search ads to place everything possible that you don't want to appear for. I've worked with people who have said, look, the dynamic search ads are working great, but I'm appearing and it's saying the word refunds next to it, or I'm appearing and my competitor is ringing me up and saying that their actual name is appearing in the adverts and it doesn't look good in that scenario. It really doesn't. So the, even though the dynamic search ads, what I'm seeing across the board is that they're performing to a really, really high level. At the same time, a huge amount of work does need to go into the research and implementation of negative keywords keywords that you don't want to appear for and in the week where we go through the keywords and 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 looking at all of that I will I will be going through setting up a negative keyword list as well so display adverts are the ads that are shown above articles videos websites that that you browse um, typically like people will call them banner ads you'll see square versions there's there's a lot of different variations of them they're pretty self-explanatory in the sense that they they're they're quite a visual display there I don't want to say similar to Facebook ads but they are kind of similar in the sense that you get to use an, an image if you wish um, but they come in lots of different sizes there's three different types of, of of display ads so you can use standard display campaigns and this is a manual setup where you select your targeting options there's smart display campaigns and this is the exact same as a standard setup but in this scenario Google does your targeting options using machine learning. So you don't put in a targeting um, in this instance. And then you can also um, use an element of display in your Gmail campaigns as well. So appearing at the top there in people's inboxes as well. Typically, I've never seen this convert very well. People tend to ignore it, if I'm completely honest. So, and my usual setup at the moment is still the standard display campaigns because I still like to have some element of control over the targeting. That's not to say, though, that the smart display campaigns are, are not getting better and doing quite well. So, and these down here then are the examples of all of the different sizes that you can use so you have your your banners your squares all of the different placements that that you can use what i would recommend is trying to get as many of the placements as possible so if you are thinking about using google display ads what i would say is go off um either use your internal designer or designer that you work with and get them to create the images in these exact sizes you can also use a tool like Canva or something like that to um, create these specific sizes. But as the sizes get smaller and as information gets squeezed, you have to just be very wary. Um, in that size, can your message or what you're trying to say be um, perceived by, by the user? Can they make out what it is? I've seen many display ads where I am on my phone, for example, is a, is a good one where I'm scrolling, I see a display ad and I actually can't even read what, what's on it. So you have to be very careful with your display ads in terms of trying to get the information in there as accurately as possible, but also as, as, as um, accessible as possible as well. Then you have shopping adverts and shopping adverts display your product and information about your product for potential customers before they hit your website and they can appear in a variety of locations, but most popular settings are above the search ads and to the right of the search ads or you can also see them here in the shopping adverts sometimes they appear along here and um, just above the um the, above the search ads sometimes they appear over here to the right hand side and if you're on a mobile typically they'll appear up here along the top as well so this is just the laptop example again where you can see the search ads are appearing and the shopping ads they will appear in conjunction with the with each other as well and they they may not overlap or they may overlap with the same business. So sometimes you might see the business here and the, their shopping ads above. So you can hit people with the search and the visual and you'll only ever be charged um, once, once, you, once you have a click, um, depending on your setup. If you, if, you're, if you are using a bid strategy just to get in front of as many people as possible, then that's 
not, not the case, but for most people, they're, they're, they're bidding on a click more so than anything else. YouTube as it's owned by Google. This is the most prominent and popular location you'll see video ads and they do come in a variety of formats. Um, if you've used YouTube before, you'll be quite familiar with all of these different types of adverts. Um, and you'll see them, you see yourself um, skip options. Sometimes you've watched the video the whole way through. There's lots of different types of adverts. So these are the different types of video ads that you can use. So there are skippable in-stream ads and this is one of the most common video types where a user has the option to skip the advert after five seconds. So the video will play and in the bottom right hand corner typically is where you'll see a skip ad button appear after five seconds. Then you have non-skippable in-stream ads and these videos are 15 seconds or shorter and viewers do not have the option in this instance to skip the advert. These are more expensive obviously than skippable adverts. Video discovery ads. This advert type appears as a thumbnail and invites users to click to watch your video. So in this instance, what you'll see is it's almost like a search advert, but in the YouTube ecosystem. So what happens is, is that someone searches for something and your thumbnail can appear at the top with a, with, with a little bit of information and it invites the user to click on that to, to watch your video in full. So this advert type is more... Um, inviting people to, to watch a video more so than, than, than get through to your website. Bumper ads. These videos are six seconds or shorter and viewers do not have the option to skip the advert. Outstream ads. Um, these videos are mobile only ads and they, they appear on partner sites and apps outside of YouTube playing in either an app or within content on a page. And then masthead ads. Um, these ads autoplay without the sound for up to 30 seconds at the top of the YouTube home feed. This is almost like a like a banner video almost. So now I am going to discuss setting up a campaign. We're going to look at the different campaign goals, the intents that you're looking for, and we're going to go through the different um, selection of campaign types and what that process looks like. We'll be going through these in a lot more detail depending on scenarios when we're looking at different sections throughout the next few weeks of the course. But this will give you an introduction and get you familiar with the platform in a little bit more detail. So this is what the inside of a Google ad account look like. Now, when you set up a brand new Google ad account, what it will try to do is, and you'll see it here, I have this switch view option. So this is Google ads in what they now refer to as expert mode. They also have a very much kind of simplified automated version um, that is heavily reliant on the Google ads structure in terms of their machine learning and their own algorithm and all of that that good stuff, but I would still highly recommend changing your account into expert mode so that you have full access to everything that you see here and that you can um, avail of the full suite of information available to you within the Google Ads platform. Once you're inside in the Google Ads platform like this, what you will see is the option to create a new campaign. When you create a new campaign, it brings you into this option. So first of all, you need to decide what is the goal of your adverts. Now, very similar to Facebook, if anyone has attended the Facebook course before, I go through the different levels of intent people have for different options. So conversion ads leading to conversions, traffic leading to clicks, and leads leading to leads. So whatever you want in this scenario, you should click, you should tell Google exactly what you want. Now, if you choose brand product, uh, product and brand consideration, um, typically that might be a little bit cheaper, but our website traffic might be a little bit cheaper than sales, but it's the quality of the audience that you're looking for um, more so than anything. So in this instance, I'm going to show you um, the sales because it's the easiest one to look at in terms of really focusing on a return on investment for your business. So then once you've selected the type of campaign or the goal that you want for your campaign, you need to select a campaign type. So you want sales and then you have these options to select where you want to appear. So in this instance, I'm going to show you a search campaign and then you can, you're asked, select the ways you'd like to reach your goal. So you can say you want website visits, phone calls, shop visits, or app downloads. 
So it is highly dependent on your business and your goal, but for the most part, people are looking for website visits, so I'm going to put that in here. And then I'm just going to put in growthuniversity.io. So a conversion action has been created but not verified. So this is a dummy account that I use for training, just to make you aware of that. But um, in, in one of the weeks, we'll be going through your tracking and conversion setup. But at this point here, you would be asked for that conversion. So then you get through to this page and this is pretty similar across all um, types. So you get to put in your campaign name. I'm just going to put in Growth University. And then you can select your networks. So this is an interesting aspect and marketers have different varying opinions on this. But typically I untick this and this because I just want to appear on Google. This will allow you to appear on Google search partners um, and other Google sites where people search for things. Um, so it's not really as relevant in most scenarios. And also I don't want to, my search ads to display in a display network either. So typically I untick these boxes, I'd say maybe 90% of the time. Sometimes I will speak to someone who would like to be included in these scenarios. So that's absolutely fine as well. There's also some hidden hidden settings here where you can hit create a start and end date if your campaign is time sensitive. You also have campaign URL options and dynamic search settings. And you can also um, look at this, the schedule of your adverts. So say, for example, you had gone back a step there and instead of website visits, you had selected that you wanted calls. But you can only answer the phone from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. You'd want to create this schedule in that scenario because you don't want to miss a lead. You don't want to miss information um, and you don't want to a customer to feel like they have missed out in some way, shape or form. So keeping to a schedule that's suited to your business is also really, really important. Next, you're going to look at the locations. So when you're looking at a location for a campaign, um, you'll see here that you have these location options. Now, you can select your region, but what happens is, is that it defaults to presence or interest. So people in or regularly in or who have shown interest in your targeted locations. So this one is interesting as the default because what happens is, is that say, for example, I'm based in Ireland, but then if someone from the UK who was not relevant to the business but was showing interest in Ireland in some way, shape or form and then search for the keyword, they would be included in that. So typically I, I go with the, the second option here. I change it to people in or regularly in the targeted location. Um, but you can also um, use the search interest of people searching for your targeted location. And that's really interesting if you are in the um, the the tourism space um, of travel, air, anything like that. That you can you can go by search interest. You can also exclude people in specific locations as well. You can also add languages to your adverts. As you can see here, it's um, defaulting to English, which is which is um, the norm here in Ireland. But also we have a huge population of, of Polish people who speak Polish and, and other regions. So sometimes you, you can add those in as well. You can also select audiences to add to your campaign. Um, and audiences we'll be going through in more detail in the audience management week. But essentially you have two options when it comes to audiences. You can, I would always say select as many audiences as possible here. Not because you're going to target them and narrow the, the, the reach of a search campaign, but you can also observe an audience for future reference. So say, for example, you created all of these. I selected all of these and they went in over here. What I can do is observe that for future reference. So say, for example, six weeks have passed. The Google ads are doing well. I can go into the audiences and say, well, if we had targeted these audiences, which one is, would have performed best? And I can see how many people came through and converted that were also part of one of these audiences. And that can, can become very beneficial down the line if I want to start creating display adverts or where I actually want to target an audience more so than just letting a flow of keywords come in. Because when you're you, with keywords, you're not actually targeting an audience. You're just whoever searches it, it must be relevant. That's the way most people operate on Google ads. 
but in this instance you can you get the opportunity to take a look as well at the audience and assess it for future use essentially and that can be really beneficial if you're finding one that's just absolutely fantastic you could create an independent campaign for that and really try to get the most out of it so there's lots of ways that you can think about this then you need to set your your budget for your campaign so how much do you want to spend every day now it's really important to note with um google ads that your daily budget is actually a reference to an, an aggregated amount over a monthly period, essentially. So what happens is, is that if you put in $10 a day, you won't spend more than $300 over the space of a month. But what might happen is, is that that budget will fluctuate depending on the search demand. So if Google feels like you're going to get a ton more conversions on say a Saturday versus a Friday what you might see happening is is that it might spend five dollars on the on the Friday and in turn spend fifteen dollars on the Saturday it will fluctuate but it will not go over the the budget amount over over the monthly period so make sure that you take that into consideration as well and just think about okay how much am I going to spend in a month and then distribute that into a daily um, budget option one of the best things about Google is that it typically doesn't spend your budget if the search volume isn't there. So for example, on Facebook, if you give Facebook $10 a day, it will spend $10 a day. But if you give Google $10 a day and there's not enough search volume for that $10 a day, it might only spend two, three, four, five dollars $5. It'll only spend, um, you only spend what you get, uh, what you're gonna get essentially. So that's certainly worth bearing in mind as well that when you're considering a budget amount for your campaigns. When it comes to bidding, uh, uh, bidding and budget as well though, what I'd always say is that yes, this is the setup part and this is all about just getting familiar with the platform, but Google has a built-in keyword planner. You can research all of this. You can get a very good gauge on what kind of bidding strategy and what kind of budget you need to be using for your specific keywords. And we'll be going through that in the keyword research phase. But this is about getting you familiar with the interface that, that is Google Ads. So here, you can type that in. For now, I'm just gonna put in 10 as an example. And then in the bidding section, you can see what you want to focus on. So in you have lots of different options that are kind of defaulted. Um, you can see here that Google have changed what would have been most common to most of us um, in terms of bid strategy. So you can focus on conversions, conversion values, clicks and impression share. Conversions is you want to get as many people um, buying as possible. Conversion value is you want to get as many people buying as high a value as possible. Clicks is just getting as many people to your website as possible. And impression share is just trying to be at in front of as many people as possible. So there's lots of different options here and you can see as you click on them, this is largely, um, um, this is largely an automated system. You can also select a bid strategy directly and these are probably some of the more familiar options. They don't recommend these anymore. However, I still regularly use them and find them highly beneficial where you're looking for a target cost per action. You're looking for a target return on investment. So like if you want to return, you need to return say $5 for every $1 spent to make them cost viable. You can use target ROAS and put in 500% because you want to, re you want to get at least five times back. This isn't to say that you will reach that. It will just endeavor to do its best to get you that. So there's lots of different options here. Maximize conversion value, maximize clicks. Manual CPC then is the probably the most traditional way of using Google Ads where you just type in your bid manually and go from there. We'll be going through all of these bidding options in a huge amount of detail in the bidding and strategy, the bidding strategy week, because there's a lot that goes into it. And there's a lot that goes into making the decisions around what bidding options you want. But again, this is just getting you familiar with the interface and, and what, what is going to be expected at each stage that you click through. The next thing that you have the option of is creating ad extensions. So site link, call out, call extensions, if you want to add more information, more links, everything else. 
There is also structured snippets, app extensions, lead form, promotion extensions, and price extensions. I would always say to everyone that I work with to add as many, many pieces of information as you possibly can in here. And the reason for that is because the more information you have in here, the longer and longer your advert becomes. And that is extremely important when it comes to screen real estate. So essentially what you want to think about is how long is my ad going to be if I am in position one? So if you are in position one, you have the opportunity to take up the full amount of the screen real estate in a mobile device, for example, if you have your advert at the top, site links underneath, everything is just stacked and it is really beneficial to get the absolute most out of your Google ads. So I would always say as priority, make sure that your site link extension. So say, for example, you might have several products or several categories of products or several extensions to your service. You could list all of those in there. It might be your frequently asked questions, contact us. All of those different links to different sections of your site can also be in there, even if it's not kind of the key part of the, the ad or why the ad's appearing to begin with. You can also add call out extensions, which is more information about your, your ad or your business information. So I love to use these call out extensions to add things like maybe there's a discount on, maybe there's lots of different things happen. Maybe you have free shipping Um, lots of information can go in there. You can also add a phone number to your ad. And again, you can go through all of these different snippets and we'll be going through those in more details, but you can add your promotion extensions, lead forms, apps, all of that. So there's plenty that you can look at in terms of getting set up with um, an extremely long advert. As, as much detail as possible there is key. So the next stage of the campaign setup is where you start creating your adverts. And this is where you start putting in your keywords and you start thinking about it. So for the purpose of this, I'm going to use the Google Ads course, this course as the example for getting people in. So there's three different types of keywords, broad match, phrase match, and exact match. We'll be going through these keywords in a lot more detail on how to use them in more detail in the coming weeks. But this, again, just to get you familiar, is you have lots of different ad groups. You, you can see here, new ad group. You can create as many of these as you want. You can create lots of different ad groups. So with that in mind, what I always recommend to people is to create as niche ad groups as possible. What you want to think is very back to that string where you're looking to get the keyword matching with the advert matching with your landing page. And the best way to do that is to have very tight knit ad groups. So when I choose a keyword, let's just use the Google ads course as an example. You can see here that this is all I am going to put in this ad, ad group. I am not going to put in any more variations of that keyword. Now, you can see here that I've used these little plus symbols, these little brackets that are different around the variations, and they each mean different things. So the first one with the pluses is a broad match. And you can see here a notification from Google to let us know that broad match modifiers are going away. So this is just for now, but going forward in realistically, you won't need to include this option. It will just be these two. So what you're looking at is a phrase match and exact match. So a phrase match is if someone searches something similar to this, then it's fine. Google ads course then in the, in the, in the, these brackets here, the highlighted word, um, those are exact match. So only if someone searches that exactly will the ad appear. Now, the reason that we just don't put in the keywords like this, where it's just like you type it in, is because Google can take a lot of liberty around 
when and where your ads are going to appear and how they're going to appear. Uh, a good example that I like to give of this is I saw someone previously use um, nothing around their keywords like this and they were selling microphones and instead uh, their adverts were appearing for things like people looking for um, huge music setups in terms of like um, like a music producer, like an actual consultant and things like that, just off the microphone keyword. So it's it can really broaden things out and make things highly irre irrelevant and can really spike your um, cost of your adverts. So one tip if, if, if you're at this point and you've already looked at keywords and things, just to make sure that you're not um, um, have them too broad. Now, Google is getting better at niching these and making sure that they're a little bit more relevant. But for now, I would still hedge my bets on using the phrase match and exact match. Now, um, as you saw there with the, the, the little notification from Google, those phrase match keywords will um, encapsulate the broad match going forward. They're going to be updated. So bear that in mind as well. So I would always say create as many of these ad groups as possible that you need and just keep them really niche. Really, really niche groups is the best way to get the most out of your adverts. Then when you get to the next stage, you can see here that it um, auto populates some information from the website. I need to make sure that I'm including a Google ads course available now, we'll say. Oh, that's too many keywords. Google ads course. You want to include um, these keywords and you can see you get the green light. Now, the more headlines you put in, the more descriptions you put in, the, the better your ad strength will be in terms of getting as many results as possible for your business. Now, what you want to think about here is, and I always say this again, back to the idea that you're trying to get as much screen real estate as possible when it comes to a search advert, is you want to lengthen these ads, as, lengthen this as much as possible. Try hit the 30 keywords. Try, like this one here is way too short. Try hit the 90 keywords. Now, another tip as well, and we'll be talking about these when we're looking at ad copy and landing pages in a bit more detail, is, is that... With Google Ads, you want to make sure that every single word that you type has a capital letter. It, um, as a little bit of a, a grammar police myself, um, I like good grammar where I can where I, where I can get it right. But in this instance, you just have to break the rules and put make sure that every single word has a capital letter at the start because it's easier to read, first of all, and it has been proven time and time again across the board, across all industries, that it is the highest performing in terms of conversion. So you just want to include it. Um, maybe not if you provide um, English uh, teaching or learning services, that might be one instance where you, you'd give this a skip. But as a general rule, you want to make sure that you're filling out as much of this information as possible. So I'm just going to get out of this here now because the next stage is just a review process that would put the advert live, which in this instance we don't need. And I'm going to show you a slight variation on the, the campaign. So let's say, for example, we chose website traffic and this time we're looking at display adverts. Again, you get your options here that I described in the in the presentation earlier about your different um, um, about your different campaign types. So I'm just going to go with a standard campaign. And you can see the setups for all of these different adverts are actually quite similar in the sense that you can choose your location, your language, your bidding, your budget, and your ad groups. The only differentiator in this, in this instance is that you're uploading images and you're filling out variants over here to because the placement is slightly different. So the ad setup process typically in terms of like your location, your audience, or any information like that, bidding, strategy, all of that typically remains the same. It's either one of two options when it comes to Google Ads. You're either looking at it from a manual perspective or you're looking at it from an automated perspective. Both are equally good and viable, but you just need to make sure that you have all of that set up. And then the rest is pretty step by step in terms of whether it's shopping, whether it's video, whether it's images, whether no matter what it is, you can just set it up um, very easily like this. Now, there is one 
additional step that you need to think about if you're using shopping adverts. And that is that you need to have a Google Merchant Center account set up. So make sure to set that up and integrate your product feed there. If you are looking at doing shopping adverts, you can just do a quick search for Google Merchant Center. I'll show you it here. And as you can see, it's it. you just sign in and you get through or just hit get started and you can import your products. And there's lots of different ways to do it. If you're Shopify or if you're on WordPress or any kind of the key big um, platforms that you can integrate it with, um, you can integrate with it very, very easily. So that's worth bearing in mind as well. So just to take a look at a few other elements of the platform um, that I'll be discussing over the coming weeks and just to get you familiar with the interface is you have your campaigns and ad groups down here. You have a second tab here which gives you a lot of detailed information about different things like your location, your change history, all of these different options here. I'd recommend if you have a Google ad account already and you're just looking to improve it, so go in and start looking at these different things. Go in and have a look at what devices are performing best. Look at the change history. Did any changes make a massive shift? Like did you change bidding strategy or things like that? You can use all of these different things to kind of dig into your adverts a little bit deeper. So that's what this tab is all about. This is more of the information of what's what's live, what's, what's paused, what's enabled. This tab here will give you uh, so much of your insights you have your overview, which will give you uh, an overview of everything. You can um, change these to clicks. Um, as you can see here, you'll have a little drop down, so you can look at whatever you need to look at. You have your recommendations tab here. One important thing to note about the recommendations tab right now is that if you are new to Google Ads or if you have a new Google Ads account set up, um, Google can auto apply recommendations on your behalf and you will need to manually turn that off in your tools and settings. So make sure that you have that turned off if it's auto applied, auto apply is on because you don't want Google auto applying recommendations on your behalf. It's also really important to note at this point as well is that Google is saying to agencies and marketing partners that if they do not implement the recommendations that they will pull their partner logo. Um, so if you're working with an agency, it's worth having a conversation with them around these recommendations. Do, do they have a partner? Do they intend to keep it? And if so, are they going to um, be implementing the recommendations because they're there? Or do they are they going to work in the best interest of the business? Now, in vast majority of them, hopefully, um, fingers crossed, will absolutely do the best for the businesses under all circumstances, even if that means losing their partner logo. Um, those changes were due to come into effect in 2021, but due to COVID, I think Google has pushed that out until either the end of the year or the start of 2022. So it's something to be wary of, something to be mindful of, but certainly not something to, to, to worry about quite yet. But do worry about it if you have a new Google ad account and they might be auto applying recommendations on your behalf. You might see things like recommended keywords, recommended snippets, recommended um, changes to your text, recommended bidding changes, all of those things might be auto applied to your account. So you need to just keep a very close eye on it. Also, when you're looking at your Google ad account, there's lots of different options up along here that are worth looking at as well. If you haven't gone into them before, we'll be going into lots of these in different amounts of detail um, depending on the week. So say, for example, on the keyword week, we'll be talking about the keyword planner and audience week. We'll be looking at the audience manager and the negatives and, and shared budgets and all of that. But it's worth going in and having a look at these and uh, getting a feel for the account. If you don't have a Google account set up already, I would highly recommend just setting one up because if you don't attach a card to it, you're, you're not going to pay for anything you can't get anything wrong and you can just do a whole pile of practicing and just getting familiar with the platform because as you can see it's actually a, a, com a complex platform in in the sense of all of the different things that you can integrate all of the different things you can use and look at in terms of keywords ad groups all of these different things so it's really important to start getting familiar with the the advertising platform itself as well but you can have a look at things around planning, what like keyword planners, you can look at how much it's gonna roughly cost you to start advertising, how many people you could potentially reach. If there's problems with your adverts, you can preview and diagnose them. You can look at your shared library, you can start creating audiences, looking at bid strategies, looking at words you need to remove from your adverts that you don't want to appear for. 
Um, a really common one that I always tell people to set up here is make sure that you have careers and jobs removed um, so that people, if they're searching for you, especially if you're in the service or consultancy space that someone isn't searching digital marketing jobs and your, your adverts are appearing because it's so similar. So there's little things like that that you can do. We'll also be talking about um, in the coming weeks around the bulk actions that you can do. So rules and scripts and things like that that can make management of your account just that little bit easier. So say, for example, if you were hitting a target ROAS or return on ad spend of, say, $7 to one, and you were saying to yourself, this is really, really good. Once it hits that, I want to increase my budget and make sure that it maintains that. You can set up rules to say, okay, so long as you're returning this amount, you can start incrementally increasing your budget amounts and things like that. Or in the opposite, where the opposite is happening, where something goes below a specific return on investment, that your budget starts pulling backwards and you start spending less and things like that. So there's lots of different things to, to look at in here. One of the most important things I would say at this point is if you're whether you're new to Google Ads or whether you have an account already, just make sure you go into your tools and settings and go into your setup and make sure that your business data, your access and security, everything is is looking good in there. You can see here the Google Merchant Center link and that is for setting up um, your Merchant Center for your for your shopping adverts. You can also look at your preferences. Linked accounts um, is really important as well. So I'm just going to go into linked accounts um, because that's probably one of the most important things to set up at this point as well, which is where you want to look at connecting with your Google Analytics or Google Analytics 4, Google Play, Salesforce. You can look at all of these different integrations that will help you manage your data, pull in data and get more, allow Google to have far more information about your your customers as well. I really hope you enjoyed this introduction to Google Ads. This week is all about getting you familiar with the platform and I hope you go off and open your ad account, set up an ad account and just start really getting a feel for the platform. Over the next few weeks I'm really looking forward to really diving in and digging into showing you about all of the different elements and how they come together to create really high performing campaigns that you can leverage for your business. If you have any questions on the session today, feel free to ping me on Slack. Reach out to me via email at jen at growthuniversity.io with any questions you might have about your Google Ads. If you are a member of Growth University, you can also reach out for a one-to-one -one session with me and I can help you one-on-one -on -one with your Google AdWords or any of your advertising for that matter. Looking forward to seeing you next week.